Good morning, Grade 7, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 7 Natural Sciences. If you have a question during this lesson, send an email with your question to Grade 7 at Worksheet Cloud, and I'm pretty sure someone will get back to you with an answer. So today's lesson, Grade 7, is on the biosphere. My name is Mrs. Hall, and I look forward to teaching you this exciting lesson. So the objectives of today's lesson is, what is the biosphere? Recap of basic terminology, components of the biosphere, the seven processes of life, a little bit of revision from grade five and six, and the requirements for sustaining life. And then I'm going to take you right back to your childhood and we're going to look at the Goldilocks zone. Sit back, relax and enjoy. So, have you heard the word sphere before? Do you know what it means? A sphere is normally used when talking about a round shape, like a ball. Now, what do we mean when we talk about the biosphere? The prefix bio indicates something to do with life. For example, biology is the study of living organisms. So how can you put these two meanings together to work out what biosphere means? And there we have our sphere. And here we have our answer. The biosphere is the place where life exists on planet Earth. When we talk about the biosphere, we are talking about a huge system, the whole world, and, and how all the different parts work together to support life. So, if we look over here, the parts of the land, the sea, and atmosphere in which organisms are able to live. The biosphere is an irregularly shaped, relatively thin zone in which life is concentrated on or near the Earth's surface and throughout its waters. All the Earth's ecosystems considered as a single self-sustaining unit. Let's recap some of our basic terminology from Grade 6. So as you know, an ecosystem is made up of a habitat with animals and plants. It consists of living and non-living things. Now the correct term for living is biotic and non-living is abiotic. What is a habitat? A habitat is the place where a living organism lives. A community is a group of living organisms who share the same habitat. A population, and what a cute one it is, is a group of living organisms sharing a habitat who are of the same species. Now, what is a species, grade sevens? Anybody know? Right. A species is a group of organisms who can breed together and have offspring. An organism is a living thing. Okay, and what a beautiful, magnificent, living thing that is. Let's recap some basics again from grade six. So we know about a producer. And we know that producers obtain their energy from the sun. But can you remember that producers are autotrophs? And these are organisms that can produce their own food using materials from inorganic sources. Now the word autotroph comes from the root words auto for self and trough for food. So an autotroph, grade seven, is an organism that feeds itself without the assistance of any other organism. I hope it's all coming back to you. Right, now let's take a look at consumers. Now you all know consumers consume and eat other plants or animals. Now a consumer is also known as a heterotroph, 
which is an organism that cannot manufacture its own food and therefore derives its intake of nutrition from other sources of organic carbon, mainly plant or animal matter. In the food chain, heterotrophs are secondary and tertiary consumers. Now, as you know, a food chain describes how different organisms eat each other, starting out with a plant and ending with an animal. And all the energy in the food chain comes from the producers or plants converting sunlight into energy with photosynthesis. The rest of the food chain just uses this energy. So as you move through the food chain, there is less and less energy available. The arrows in the food chain show how each organism transfers energy to the next one. As you all know, a food web is just a feeding relationship which involves many different food chains. So, when we speak of all life on Earth as it interacts with the non-living, the abiotic factors such as rocks and soil, water and air, the atmosphere, we call this together the biosphere. Now life can be found in water, in soil and in the rocks, all the air around us and these components form part of the biosphere and have very special names. We have the lith lithosphere which includes soil, and rocks, okay, as seen over here. It's the actual solid parts of the earth. We have the hydrosphere, which includes all the water. And we have the atmosphere, which includes all the gases. Now the biosphere includes all living organisms and also the dead organic matter. When we speak about the atmosphere, we say it is the layer of gases that surrounds the Earth. The three most important gases in the atmosphere are nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide. The atmosphere is made up of several layers. Without the atmosphere, life as we know it would not be possible. The oxygen and the carbon dioxide in the lower layers of the troposphere that's the sphere that touches Earth, allow life to exist as organisms can respire and plants can photosynthesize. The atmosphere also helps to keep the Earth warm by trapping solar energy. The atmosphere protects life from too much UV, re UV radiation from the sun. Earth is the only planet in our solar system that can support life due in part to our atmosphere. Now the hydrosphere consists of all water on Earth in all its different forms. It could be liquid in the sea, dams, river, rain and dew. It could be a solid as snow on the mountains or in hail or as a gas as water vapor in the air. Aquatic habitats, those are water habitats, include rivers, dams, lakes, ponds, marshes, estuaries, groundwater and aquifers. aquifers sorry. There are many different aquatic habitats in the sea, such as rocky shorelines and rock pools, deep water and polar ice caps. The lithosphere includes the rocks, the soil and all the sand on earth. Organisms depend on the lithosphere in many different ways. So let's take a look at these pictures and think about how organisms are depending on the lithosphere here. Okay, those are nests. Right, how do you think which animals and organisms depend on the lithosphere to build their nests there? Here we have earthworms in the soil. And here we have a rocky pool. So, animals live in parts of the lithosphere, such as earthworms, which live in the soil. Ants, which make their nests out of sand, 
Many microorganisms live in the soil and some birds make their nests on rocks and also use sand to make the nests. Most plants and trees need soil to grow in. So the lithosphere is a very important part of our biosphere, grade sevens. Now, remember Mrs. Noog from grade five. We've looked at the different parts of the biosphere and seen that there are many different types of organisms that exist. Each of the organisms that we have seen so far need to be able to stay alive in those specific conditions. We say they need to adapt to live in their particular habitat. What does it mean to stay alive though? Remember Mrs. Noog, movement, respiration, sensitivity, nutrition, excretion, reproduction and growth. You need all of those seven life processes to stay alive. Let's start with M for Miss, uh, Mrs. <laughs> all living things need to be able to move. Moving does not have to consist of big movements. Even plants move. For example, as the flowers and leaves turn to face the sun during the course of the day. R, all living things need energy to perform the life processes. Organisms release energy from their food by a process called cellular respiration. S, all living things need to be sensitive to their environment. N, all living things need nutrition as they need to break down the nutrients during cellular respiration to release energy. E, all living things need to be able to excrete waste. R, all living things need to be able to reproduce so that they do not die out. And G, all living things need to be able to grow. Now we know that animals and plants and other living organisms need um, to do this in order to be classified as living. In order to stay alive, these living organisms require or need certain things or specific conditions. Let's now take a look at the requirements necessary to sustain life. Sustain means to keep things alive or in existence. We also use the word sustainable when we want to say that something can continue or be continued for a long time. So living things require the following to survive. Energy, gases, water, soil, and favorable temperatures. Now energy, all living things need energy to stay alive and perform the life processes. Plants need energy from the sunlight in order to photosynthesize. Other organisms uh, get their energy from the food that they eat. Gases. All living things require oxygen for cellular respiration. Oxygen is used to release energy from nutrients and carbon dioxide and water is produced as a waste product of respiration. Green plants also need carbon dioxide to photosynthesize. Water is vital to life. Every organism on our planet needs water to live. When astronomers search for life outside of our solar system, they search for planets that might contain liquid water, believing that where there is water, there may be life. Soil sustains life on Earth. Most plants depend on soil for support to anchor the plant in the soil, minerals and water. Without the soil, plants would not be able to produce the food that animals and other living organisms depend on. Favorable temperatures. All organisms are adapted to live in a particular temperature. In general, our planet has favorable temperatures to support life. Earth is at an optimal distance from the sun, 
so that it is not too hot, like on Mercury, and not too cold, like on Neptune. In natural sciences, when we use the word favorable, we mean something that is ad advant <laughs> advantageous, helpful, or optimal. Now, every solar system has a Goldilocks zone, which is a region that is not too hot, close to the sun, and not too cold, far from the sun, to be able to sustain life. Earth is in the middle of our solar system's Goldilocks zone. And so, in the search for extraterrestrial life, scientists are searching for planets in the Goldilocks zone around stars where the temperature is just right, not too hot and not too cold for liquid water. Remember the story of Goldilocks and the three bears? She found their habitat too hot or too hard and then just right. Well, scientists look at outer space in the same way. Some planets are way too hot. Others are too cold. But some are just right to support life as we know it. How many inhabitable planets could really be out there? We have here about a million grains of rice, and we can imagine that each one of these grains of rice represents a star within the Milky Way galaxy. Of these millions of stars, 20% have planets. So here we have 200,000 grains of rice representing those stars with planets. If 10% of those stars have small rocky planets like Earth that fly within the Goldilocks zone, that leaves us with about 20,000 stars. Scientists estimate that 1% of those stars might actually have rocky planets like Earth, leaving us with 200 grains of rice. And now imagine that only 1% of them actually has life on them. That leaves us with a mere two grains of rice representing the planets that actually harbor life. But our Milky Way galaxy contains 100 billion stars, not the million grains of rice we started with. And scaling up tells us that our Milky Way galaxy actually contains 200,000 inhabited planets. So like Goldilocks, maybe we humans will someday find a new planet that feels just right and move right in the universe now you know so grade sevens i finish off as i always love to with a little bit of humor and i hope you enjoy these little cartoons i found for you on extraterrestrial life out there in the goldilocks zone so honestly hank how can you read that rubbish humans do exist as well as ew put those back <laughs> and we all love monsters inc grade sevens i hope you've enjoyed this lesson and most importantly i hope you've learned something new thanks for watching and don't forget this uh, video was brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. Um, please don't forget to download the homework sheet and um, take a look at the memo when you're finished and hopefully you've got all your answers correct. Take care grade sevens, see you soon.